joints on the left, live in the hills, but I still get a spread. Something for the live, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's in the down. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch us coming in on March 31st, 2021, and the stock market is gonna get surprised tomorrow. And I got three stacks that I'm looking at coming into the rest of this week. But we got a lot to talk about. A lot happened in the market. It was a lot more worrisome in the morning. We ended up not closing too bad. And even the NASDAQ was green at one point, closed barely down. The Dow Jones fell the most today right alongside the S&P. But we still have to be watching out for this Credit Suisse situation. We have a lot to talk about it and even had updates today. But now tomorrow, we are going to get the Biden infrastructure plan. It's going to include guidance on taxes as well, too. And this has the potential to surprise in many ways. So we have a lot to talk about. But I want to go over what happened in the market today, what we're looking at tomorrow, the plays that we made today, and then the plays that we're looking at coming into the rest of the week. So let us not delay. You guys know what you need to do. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes for open. It's the first link in the description and it is pinned in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join. YouTube.com slash the stock market. You can post the plays, see the plays, watch the watch us come to life. And yes, if you're going to ask me whether or not I'm going to make a play, then I'm just going to plug stream alert. So if you come here, it's in the description. If you guys miss anything on stream, uh, you can sign up for it. Make sure you watch the video. Uh, we don't like to plug stuff, but a lot of people are really worried about plays and all that. So it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Shout out to Colt. Shout out to Chad, baby. Appreciate y'all supporting. But like, seriously, just like learn and be patient. Don't worry. Uh, or you have options. And the most important thing you need to do, post or watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to Chad, baby. So right off the bat, anxiety and assurances. That was the main story for today. We got a little bit more clarity on the Credit Suisse situation. And a lot of analysts are expecting by Friday, Credit Suisse will share how much exposure they had or how much they've already lost. And there's a lot that's going to go into it. It looks like it shouldn't be bigger than 10 billion or 50 billion dollars, which is still a lot. It is going to affect banks differently, uh, especially Credit Suisse. And that's where the assurance is coming today. You were seeing it yesterday. You've been hearing it even more today. Bank after bank, they were coming out today saying, hey, we don't have exposure or we limit it or we lost no money. That's what happened to Wells Fargo today. And they shot up. So by Friday, once we get that report of kind of how much losses are at stake, that is going to shed a lot of light on the situation. And we'll be able to either ease concerns that maybe it was bigger than we expected, or we'll find out that it was pretty big. It will probably affect one bank, Credit Suisse, maybe another bank, but then it might lead to some litigation, even restrictions or Wall Street regulation, because something like this did happen in the past before. It's just really not a good looking event and it could even affect liquidity. But I talked about this yesterday. We talked about this a lot. I think this situation is still really important. It's gonna take some time to develop, but at least we have some guidance a little bit on what to look for. But now when that data comes out, the market is not going to be open. So it's Easter Sunday. The market is actually open on Monday. I think it's Easter in Europe for some people, but United States stock market is closed on Good Friday. So Thursday is the last trading day. By the time we get the report from Credit Suisse, the market will be closed. So we will see how it plays out and how that carries on into the weekend. But believe it or not, that is not the thing that I think is going to surprise. The thing I think is going to surprise tomorrow is going to be Biden's plan. So he's going to be revealing his infrastructure plan or the spending plan. It's going to include stuff about infrastructure, all of that. There's already speculations on the amount. We've heard a little bit about roads and highways, about what he wants to do with taxes, even breaking up the amounts in two different bills. And we've talked about this today. I think it's going to be a negotiation tactic. And this is where I think it gets interesting because I think he might come heavy with the taxes on this one. This is just going to be the first report. I don't think it will actually be that, but it could spook the market. It could shock them. But at the same time now, even if it's not that bad, what we are seeing is a lot of the infrastructure plays are already getting priced in. So if you've seen commodities, steel, and Caterpillar, they've all been shooting up coming into this. So there's definitely going to be winners because he is going to reveal a lot of spending and infrastructure, and there is going to be winners. Taxes are going to be the losers. So I think it's either going to surprise in the sense that taxes are either going to be really, really big, and that could create a negative reaction, or I think you're going to get surprised and nothing happens. And pretty much the effect on energy and infrastructure gets offset by taxes. And 
and don't forget energy too. We saw how that played out at the beginning of the year. So there's a few different areas we could be looking at with all this, but this is going to be a big focus tomorrow. We'll be watching this on stream. I believe he is going to do a press conference or, or, or at least he's going to talk. He's not going to answer questions, but you know what I'm saying. So we're definitely going to be watching that. There is also still going to be the jobs report this week and PMIs. That's still important. Market got distracted very, very early at the start of the week with this whole Credit Suisse situation. We have the tax plan and all that tomorrow. So we still got important data points. We've been seeing those baseline effects. It looks like the market hasn't really been reacting. So we'll see. But this would have been a little bit more important if we didn't see all that drama in fold. But finally, now coming into the end of this week, even the beginning of the quarter, even how we saw today play out when you see the market today was very interesting. If you remember the morning, because we actually gapped down and the market was looking pretty weak and even bonds were very, very ugly this morning. The bonds started going down. So TLT was green, but it was actually coming back to some of those danger levels we've been at. And why I'm bringing this up, because in the midst of everything going on this morning, you saw a lot of the reopening trades from the airlines all the way down to the casinos. They had a different response. They gapped up and then they just shot up and they led the way most of the day. So even though there's been negative comments from health officials, that reopening trade was very, very powerful. So the fact is you're having a lot of different things. Again, you're seeing the counterbalance with tech and all that. We're going to get the tax plan. You're seeing people get out there. One thing I really want to watch for in the next coming weeks or even coming into Q2, I think a lot of people got distracted with what's going on, but I think the reopening could be the game changer. As we start to reopen, I think the effect it's going to have on both stocks and the economy, that is still unknown and kind of uncertain here. And I think it might kind of be a little bit more transitory than a lot of people expected, meaning it may not be that smooth. And you're seeing how it's influenced these rotations. Again, that economic shift, that value rotation that we were really seeing at the beginning of the month and last month. So putting that into perspective, tomorrow will be very, very key, both with the plan. If we see any continuation from the reopening, any of that data, again, the vaccine stuff could even be important. And then finally, that external factor we got from the Credit Suisse situation. So there's a lot to decode, but I think there's a lot of things hanging beneath the surface. So I hope you're ready, but that is pretty much it. So let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, I got three different stocks that I want to look at and even a couple more, but most of them are going to be related to the plan tomorrow. So depending on if it's one bill or two bills and the amounts and even the scope of it, a lot could be priced in, but I think a lot of the counterbalance reactions is what's going to throw the market off. So tying that into everything and even the bond situation, it is going to be interesting. And then even looking at all of these different plays with growth coming down and kind of the rockiness to March, a lot of people have been asking, you know, where are the plays, where are the plays? I haven't been making as much and even coming into this, these are plays I'm watching, but we did good on some, we got burned on a lot and we still have exposure with a lot of time on some. So I'm not trying to force anything here. And I encourage you guys to be wise about it too, because as we enter in this new quarter, more information and new information, that is what's going to be needed to get some real moves or breakouts or at least once we could kind of confirm the direction it's been a premium seller's market so you don't want to get too ahead of yourself that being said we have an event tomorrow you're going to get the plan we at least know some catalyst so i want to keep my eyes out for this the first set of plays i'm going to be watching it seems a little bit weird but ford and gm they've been holding up value wise and even looking at them compared to the dow and everything else i think they can benefit off of the infrastructure plan or in general if there is just a broader push to the dow and then you do see see the Dow break out and confirm a direction. These could be some really good pickups. So I've been talking about them. We've seen Ford even pop. It came back down. So they still got caught up in the volatility, but at the end of the day, they are holding up. So that is what I've really been liking about them. So you can see it was like what? Beginning of the month. So it's been holding this level. And if you even look at the Dow, it kind of looks almost exactly the same to a degree, except that it hasn't caught up there. So that's kind of trailing behind. I think GM is a little bit higher, but these are some of the factors I'm keeping in mind. And even and that being said, there's another play I'm going to be watching, but it's not a main play because you can see here it matches up with the Dow. It's hitting those all time highs caterpillar. So I would have put this on my main watch list. The reason I didn't is simply because it's already had the run up. So it's kind of been leading into this. And you've seen this with a couple of these infrastructure or energy stocks. So I think I'll get more opportunity with some of the automakers, but we will see going to keep an eye. If it's not a good play, I don't want to take it, but that is going to be the first set of plays. The second play Bank of America, Wells Fargo, mainly and any of the domestic banks for the tax plan, even some of the bigger ones. But with everything being domestic, I think that's going to be important. But also it's going to even lead into the third play. This is something we talked about at the beginning of the year. It's looking at the people who have done really good or who have a lot of money. This idea is tax the rich or tax the people with a lot. So banks fall into that category. They're domestic. It's related directly with the money. So I want to see how those play out.
out tomorrow. We're going to keep our eye on that. And then finally, Amazon and Facebook. And now this is related to what I just said, but also anything with big growth with a lot of profits, they could get hit by higher taxes or specific taxes, depending on what they got going on or their profit level. So they could get clapped or it might just balance out if there's a broader positive effect with everything else. So a couple different options. The surprise that I'm looking for is a non-reaction. If anything, infrastructure and energy cancels out taxes, keeps the market steady, and then the market goes back to responding to everything that it has here. So we will see how that plays out, but those are going to be the main play as far as everything else. Watch JP Morgan. They've kind of been the better bank in all of this. They went up a lot and held up a lot. People were more surprised that they weren't more heavily involved with the baby mama drama with Arkego. So that was pretty surprising. Watch them. Watch W Key and even Funko, but the NFT stocks, they made a move. W Key announced the marketplace today for NFTs. They shot up and then came back down. So I thought it was interesting that we performed a little bit better in the close, but they slipped. So watch them. Watch Tesla. They were down a lot today. Then they had an epic bounce and they're still doing good. I said this early in the morning. I was a little surprised they were down because I was like, well, Tesla could benefit off of the infrastructure stuff. So that one was really surprising, but we'll see how it plays out. And this one could probably be more volatile depending on the announcement or what they announced. So keep your eye on them. Keep your eye on US Steel, kind of like Caterpillar, but pay attention to any of these commodities. I really do think steel is going to have a big impact just because it's even related with China and all that and even with what we got going on domestic so watch them watch Eric and this is looking at the materials because remember the first time we played Eric it was talking about this plan and infrastructure and what they were discussing because there was also MP but they already kind of shot up so Eric is like the ghettoer less quality one and I say that because I don't know much about this but then MP is actually more quality and people actually know the name they've been in business just more reputable so watch the material ones I think these are some that people kind of forgot about so we'll see how that plays out but still holding those shares of Eric so watch them watch Walgreens they're gonna have their earnings tomorrow they're kind of bouncing back up looking a little bit like Ford but they've had a big run up I think their earnings will be key I want to watch the premiums but I think it could be a little volatile just because we've seen a big move in value and we saw what happened with Rite Aid so I will be keeping a close eye on that one even remind me to take a look at that one tomorrow so watch them watch Lulu they had earnings they beat and did very very good but they sold off so even retail was leading this morning again that was part of the reopening trade so this is a pretty interesting chart we got here again Lulu is part of that big growth category so we'll see how that one plays out it could be interesting I'm still going to be watching zoom I like that it's still hanging out at the bottom again that liquidation risk from Arkegos and everything going on and the companies that are leading I think that's still in play so I still have those old longer term puts I have not checked those and I just did now and they're actually down eight percent they were up 50 percent only a couple days ago so been seeing a pretty weird premium crush all across the board and I think that's overall just due to trading demand but we'll talk about that but finally TLT ladies and gentlemen it was very very scary today the bond situation is key only if it keeps coming back up the bad part is the 10 year is at 1.7 but still somewhat chill today it could still bounce from here and then if it does and we see rates come down that will be actually very good that would at least show a little bit more stability than what we've been seeing with hit a high bounce for one day and then keep going so we will find out how that plays out but the real x factor right now is the dollar it shot up a ton even moving pretty crazy after hours this is the highest it's been all year coming back to some of those November levels but if the dollar really starts to break out even more but even now what I want to look for and it could be a trigger if you see the dollar strengthen even more massively sell off very hard and that would probably be because of a reaction to the infrastructure bill or anything but you see a hard sell off after a really hard run and then it runs back up again setting more and more new highs that could be a danger indicator so keep your eyes peeled and be patient and I hope you're ready but that is your watch list ladies and gentlemen make sure hydrate healthy ready to go make sure you post your watch list make sure we see you there in the morning i need the armor on i need the helmet shining i need you to remember it's optimism baby throw it in front of you but the cold loves you i love you i'm gonna see you in the morning let's go